In this problem, we have an infinitely wide plane, which ex extends up to infinity on all the sides. It's made up of insulating material, and it has a positive charge distributed at the uniform surface density of sigma coulomb per meter square. We want to find out electric field at a distance L from the plane. So what we have here is a plane of insulating material, like a paper, and it has a positive charge on it. Now, if it has a positive charge, on this side, then the plane also has a positive charge on this side because remember this is an insulator and charge is distributed uniformly in any insulator. We want to find out the electric field at a point here which is at a distance L from the plane. And so looking at it in 3D like this, if my point is here, I can draw it something like this and this is the distance L from the plane. This is my point B. What would be an ideal Gaussian surface? I think the symmetry essentially is in over this area. The symmetry of charge distribution is we have the charge distributed symmetrically over this area of the plane. So I can pick my Gaussian surface to be, say, a cylinder. One end, one surface of the cylinder passes through point P. So point P lies on this surface of the cylinder. Now, if I have just this cylinder, then it is not enclosing the charge. So, I pick a cylinder which ex extends on both the sides of the surface. So, essentially, if this was my surface, half of my cylinder is on this side and half of my cylinder is on this side. Say I say that the radius of the cylinder is R. And so, the way you can think of it is that there is a cylinder that passes something like this through my surface. And the radius is R. And my point P lies on this end of the cylinder, on the top surface of my cylinder, like this. So, now what is the direction of electric field here? Since the charge is uniformly distributed, electric field is acting perpendicular to the plane everywhere on this paper. And so, electric field is going to be parallel to the sides of the cylinder, to the curved side of the cylinder, and it is going to be perpendicular to the ends of the cylinder because the electric field is perpendicular to the plane of the paper. Let us draw that here. So, to complete my cylinder, this is the other side of the cylinder, which is behind my paper. Electric field is going to be perpendicular to each point of the cylinder. So, this is my E. It is always going to be perpendicular, given the charge distribution. So, electric field is going to be perpendicular to the ends of the cylinder. Now, the electric field, as we said, because the charge is uniformly distributed, it acts on both the sides, and so electric field on that side is also going to be perpendicular. Now, remember that the charge on the surface is positive charge, so the electric field will act away from the positive charge. And that is the reason why on this side, electric field is perpendicular in this direction. This side, the electric field is perpendicular in that direction. Again, bringing my paper, electric field here is going to be acting away perpendicular on this side. Electric field here is going to act away perpendicular to the paper this side because the charge on the paper is uniform. Uh, sorry, because the charge of the paper is a positive charge. So, with that in place, let us apply Gauss law. And what does my Gauss law say? It says integral E dot dA is equal to Q enclosed over epsilon zero. Again, my integral e dot dA can be thought of made up of three surfaces. One is the curved surface of the cylinder, and the other two surfaces are the front and the rear ends. And so, I can write integral e dot dA is equal to integral e dot dA over the curved surface of the cylinder, plus integral e dot dA over the front surface of the cylinder, which is facing me on which my point P lies, plus integral E dot dA over the rear surface of the cylinder, which is on the other side. So, since E and the curved surface are parallel, dA over the curved surface is going to be acting like this. And so, E is acting like this, and the angle is 90 degrees. And so, I can say that E dot dA over the curved surface is zero. E dot dA over this surface what is my dA here? dA is going to be parallel in this direction. And so E and dA are parallel. 
For this surface, my DA is going to act in that direction. Again, bringing my cylinder, my paper, DA here is in this direction, E is in this direction, they are parallel. DA here is in this direction, E is in this direction, they are parallel. And this was my E. And so what I get is, if the radius of the cylinder is R, then this becomes a. Let's see what E is. Since this charge distribution is uniform and the plane is infinite, we can say that at any distance from my plane of plane, my E is constant. And so I can write this as essentially, let me use my pig pen as essentially E integral dA for front plus E integral dA for rear and that becomes equal to 2E and times pi r square since that is the area of the surface. That is my integral dA both for front and rear is pi r square so this becomes 2E pi r square. Now what is my Q enclosed? Q enclosed is essentially the charge on this surface at which my cylinder intersects the plane surface. What is the charge on this surface? If my surface density is, if my charge density is sigma coulomb per meter square, then my Q enclosed will be equal to, so let me write that, 2e pi r square is equal to Q enclosed over epsilon 0 and from this I can get Q enclosed is sigma times the area of the surface that is again pi r square because this is a uniform cylinder over epsilon 0. Pi r square pi r square go out and all I get is E to epsilon 0 and that is the electric field due to an infinitely wide insulating plane of charge with charge density sigma coulombs per meter square. Now the thing to notice here is that I need not have selected a cylinder here. I could have selected a cuboid. Right? What would have happened is this surface would have become a square, this surface would have become a square and the intersecting surface would also have become a square. E would have remained parallel to the sides, E would have remained perpendicular to the ends. And so what I would have had is 2E times the area of the square is equal to sigma times the area because the area of the intersection between the Gaussian surface and my plane of charge gives us what is the charge enclosed. And they both cancel out and so E would have remained the same. You can try it out by picking up some different surface which is essentially following the symmetry that depends on the plane. If you remember that is why we selected because we said that this surface had a planar symmetry. Secondly, the thing to notice here is that E depends only on the charge density and then there is 2 epsilon 0 which is a constant. So the E does not depend on the distance of point P from the plane surface. And so what we can say is that if I have a plane surface, E at any point is given by sigma over 2 epsilon 0, whether that point lies here, 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 or quite far away. And so E essentially is uniform on both sides of the, of the plane up to infinity. With this, there's one more thing that we should see is what happens if I have two surfaces now. Say if I am talking about two surfaces, uh, one with a positive charge and other with a negative charge. And I draw them something like that. So what I, let me show it before. So I have this surface with a positive charge. Remember, it's a non-insulating, oh, sorry, it's an insulating surface. So the charge is positive on this side and positive on this side. And I have another surface which has I have another plane which has a negative charge, so the negative charge is on this end and on this surface. And both these planes are placed together separated by a distance L. And can you find out what is the electric field on, let me see, what is the electric field on this side 
on a point here in between the two planes and on this side. And let us do that. It is pretty simple. So what I will draw is two surfaces as we are looking from this side. And so I have two surfaces like this. See, this is the surface. I'm not completing my whole surface. And this is another surface. And they're separated by a distance L. Okay. This has a positive charge distributed uniformly with sigma coulomb per meter square. And this surface has a negative charge distributed uniformly at sigma coulomb per meter square. And I want to find out electric field at three points. One point is on the right side, one point is on the left side, and one point is in between the two surfaces or the two planes. Now, this is a positive charge. The electric field at this point due to my plane A, let me call it plane A, and let me call this as plane B, which has a negative charge. So electric field due to plane A is going to be acting away from plane A. The magnitude is sigma over 2 epsilon 0. Electric field at this point due to plane B is going to act in this direction and that magnitude also is sigma over 2 epsilon 0. Remember we said that the distance of the point from the plane does not matter since E is constant everywhere. So the electric field due to this plane which is closer to the point and due to this plane which is further away from the point is the same. Both the electric fields are in opposite directions and they'll cancel out and the resultant electric field at this point is going to be zero. Similarly, I can argue here that electric field is again equal and opposite. E is equal to sigma over 2 epsilon 0. E due to the positive plane is going to be equal to sigma over 2 epsilon 0. They are in opposite direction and so the resultant electric field is zero. However, at a point in the center, the electric field due to the positive Oh, I drew this the opposite direction. Oh, I'm sorry. There is an error here and I must note that electric field due to this plane has to be acting in this direction. So this is my red. It has to act away from the positive charge. And electric field due to the negative charge should act towards the charge. So this is the direction of electric field due to plane blue. The rest of it remains the same. The resultant E is 0. Now, think about the point in between. E, due to the negative charge, is going to act in this direction. Its magnitude is sigma over 2 epsilon 0. E, due to the positive charge, is acting away from the positive charge and is also in this direction. And is sigma over 2 epsilon 0. So the resultant E for this point, and let me write that here, my E resultant for a point in between is essentially sigma over 2 epsilon 0 plus sigma over 2 epsilon 0, which is equal to sigma over epsilon 0. And so what I get is that if I have two parallel planes, which are infinitely wide, the surface density is sigma coulomb per meter square, but one has a uniformly distributed positive charge and other has a uniformly distributed negative charge. Then the electric field on either sides of the plane is zero and the electric field in between the planes is uniform. At every point in between the plane, the electric field is sigma over epsilon zero and the electric field is acting away from the positive plate and acting towards the negative.